Hi there, welcome back to IndyCar on the 17th of July. Firstly, apologies for there not being a programme yesterday. Um, unfortunately, due to two sort of serious family emergencies over the weekend, I wasn't able to get the programme out to you. I um, also wanted to let you know today that uh, at any time during this broadcast, you can rewind the live broadcast and watch from the beginning. So if you come into the program a little bit late, don't panic, you can automatically rewind the entire program back to the beginning and watch from the beginning, and that's available online all the time that this broadcast is going out to you. Also, a uh, big thank you to all those of you who have continued to donate to my crowdfunder. That is the only thing at the moment which is allowing me to continue broadcasting at all. Anyway, the topic of today's uh, program is a single topic. You may already have seen the internet, particularly Twitter, alive with words that are trending. Uh, and the main trend at the moment is save the date. Now, save the date refers to the date of the 22nd of this month, which is actually this coming Saturday. And for those of you whose Scottish history is a bit rusty, let me remind you that this date, the 22nd of July, uh, 317 years ago, was the exact date upon which the uh, notorious Treaty of Union was signed in Edinburgh. And to mark this occasion, a new document is about to be revealed. Now, I can't talk too much about what this document is. I can tell you that its title is the Stirling Directive, and it is probably the most important historical document to be published in this country in the last 317 years. There is a secret which has been hidden from you for 317 years. A secret which the British state dare not ever acknowledge in, is actually real. And so because of that, it has been concealed behind a veil of mystery and mystique and has been consigned to the annals of sort of historical mythology. Um, many of you out there who are died in the wool independence campaigners for years will already know that I'm talking about the sovereignty of the people of Scotland, a historical fact uh, which has been largely airbrushed out of existence by continued 300 years of basically um, British obfuscation, concealment, misdirection, and now in the age of multimedia, a whole um, program of disinformation and also, I think, um, misdirection, making us believe something isn't real when it really is. It is real, and you're going to find out how real it is on the 22nd. There will be an event in Edinburgh, in the capital of Scotland, on Saturday, and will be a follow-up to that major event, the major press conference, which is due to be held that day at 3 p.m. at Holyrood Parliament itself, where we're expecting hundreds, if not thousands, of people to turn out to hear this document read out loud for the first time. Now, I was uh, on a committee which chose the wording of this document. I'm very grateful to the committee of Salvo who um, are sponsoring this. Now, I have to say to you at this point that Salvo is not the organization which originated this document. It is sponsoring this effort. Uh, it's sponsoring this effort because Salvo believes that it's time that the people of Scotland knew the truth about their own powers, and it's about time that we use them. What this will do, and I think Peter Bell's uh, comments have probably put this far more eloquently than I could, this is a tectonic shift in the entire uh, political architecture of Scotland. It is a huge shift in the centre of political power gravity from elected politicians, from institutions like Westminster and Holyrood, directly to everybody in Scotland. The contents of this will be made known at the press conference. Um, there have been many people invited to the press conference and media from all across the world has been invited to the conference. What is going to be revealed I can't tell you exactly, but all I can tell you is watch the news because you will hear and see further teasers, you will see probably memes as well explaining the context of this announcement and why it's so important at this precise moment in Scottish history. At a time when the United Kingdom is struggling 
uh, to meet its debt repayments because it has vastly overspent so much and it has um, created so much artificial money in order to fund its own activities. This is a time when the United Kingdom is desperate for us not to know this and will do anything to try and discredit the launch of this document. Now, at a time of, um, I think, interconnectedness of all things, and the 5G network, incidentally, is just that, the interconnectedness of every electronic gadget in the world, including your refrigerator, your toaster, your ceiling fan, your television set, everything electronic will soon be connected to the 5G network, enabling um, faceless individuals in charge of this network to spy on all of us. Now we know that um, our politicians, and I'm talking here about all of our politicians in both Westminster and here in Scotland, all of those elected officials, whether they are members of unionist parties or whether they are members of ALBA, uh, the SNP or the Green Party in favour of independence, all of them are very well aware of the fact that everything that they do and say has been monitored at all times by some faceless spooks at GCHQ who um, can generate all sorts of aliases and false identities at any time. There is an implied sort of threat in the background that any politician elected in any parliament under the United Kingdom's weird system of devolution is subject, subject is the correct word, uh, to the Crown of England. And whether we agree with this interpretation or not, our politicians are bound by oath to the Crown of England. We've, uh, well, I've discussed many times why Charles isn't the King of Scotland and why he can never be the King of Scotland and why he cannot ever become uh, the Sovereign of Scotland simply because it's not constitutionally possible. But also the Union itself, the treaty that was signed 317 years ago, had a precondition. The precondition was designed by the Scots negotiators to ensure that the sovereignty of the people of Scotland would remain in perpetuity and that if it were threatened at any point by the Crown of England, then that would be the end of the Union once and for all. Sadly, with things like the Internal Markets Act, um, and other new legislation designed to ensure that the Scottish Parliament cannot take decisions and make legislation on behalf of those who elected them, including, incidentally, holding a lawful referendum on the future of the Union. In light of all of that, they have already breached the Treaty of Union because they have prevented the lawful right of the Scots to self-determination, not just under the constitutional arrangement of Scotland within the Union, but also under international law, which guarantees the right of self-determination to all peoples, and I've mentioned this on several occasions. So this is going to be an opportunity for everybody in this country to take control of the future of the nation, and not give it to the politicians to play with. We know that the um, the manifestos, or if you like, the prototype manifestos of both the SNP party and ALBA and probably the Greens are going to be limited in scope to promising things like trying to force the United Kingdom to negotiate or uh, to put so much pressure on the United Kingdom that they must come to the no negotiating table based on the fact that we've won a certain number of seats in a general election or we have a majority of the vote in a general election. But unfortunately this will not be enough. We know it will not be enough because the English state, the crown, if you like, of England is so strong that it can continue to say no and there are no repercussions to them. On the other hand, they are quite capable, of course, of implying threats, uh, not to necessarily the safety of their politicians who are supposedly for independence, but to their careers uh, and to the future of the Scottish Parliament itself. And there are many such threats implied in the background. And we have heard Mike Russell on one occasion saying that we don't know, in other words, you and I don't know what the SNP is up against. I think we do know what, we're, what the SNP is up against, and those politicians are fearful for a reason. Um, who's to know how the United Kingdom would react if, if they took some precipitate action to call a referendum? However, 
this new document gives the people of Scotland not the power, because we've already got it, but are there to remind us that we have the lawful right to use the power. And using a power like this means actually making our politicians do what they said they would do seven times in the past, and that is manifesto pledges to hold a referendum. Seven manifestos later, they still haven't done so. There was supposed to be a, um, a lawful referendum on ending the union this year in the autumn, and that is obviously not happening. So in order to break the logjam, this is what must happen. And for the people of Scotland to wake up and realise that they have this power is very, very important. So for those of you watching today, you have no idea what the uh, Stirling Directive is, wait and see. It will appear on your TV screens, it will be all over the internet, it will be all over Twitter, it's trending on Twitter at the moment anyway, and it will continue to do so. And I want you as loyal fans of this programme to go out from here today and go on Twitter if you can and create that hashtag. And the hashtag at the moment is save the date. Hashtag can also be uh, the Sterling Directive. Use all of these words if you like, but get the buzz going because this has got to go to as many millions of people as possible here in Scotland and all across the world because we need to announce to the world that we are taking back our power. We've had it removed from us unlawfully by the neighbouring state for 317 years and we've had enough. Enough is enough. Our politicians are unable to act. We need to give them the power to act. And that means we need to invoke our own power as sovereign Scots. It's not a myth. It is not a legend. It's not a piece of musty old history that doesn't matter anymore. And interestingly, if you're worried about people like the Faculty of Advocates in Scotland, uh, whose leader appears to pour scorn on the idea of popular sovereignty, just remember that certain elements of the judiciary of Scotland, the judicial system of Scotland, are claimed to be reserved matters to Westminster. And that might give you some idea of why certain individuals in the top ranking uh, sort of echelons of the Scottish legal system claim that the claim of right is just a load of old hokum and that nobody has popular sovereignty in Scotland. Well. Now you know why they say that. It's because they are being controlled by Westminster because they claim that that matter is reserved. It's nothing to do with politics. It's to do with the legal system being controlled from afar. Anyway, as far as you and I are concerned, we the people have had enough. And this is our chance to make that known to everyone. So there will be invitations issued to all independence organisations and parties and hubs and anybody who is a Scot who wants independence to join this and to make their feelings known. And it will be um, easy for you to understand how to do this once the announcement has been made. I'm just laying the groundwork. This is going to be seismic. It's going to be huge. And I want everybody behind it. So, that is my message for you today. It's going to be a long week waiting, waiting for this to happen. But since if you look at the news pages of any of the popular media today, you'll notice that absolutely nothing of interest is happening in Scotland. It's all silly season stories, beached whales, it's about uh, the, the NHS failing as usual according to stories in the Daily Mail and so on. However, the real truth is something completely different. And so from a political point of view, we are unique actually in the world in having the power that we do have, but most of us don't realize that it isn't just a fable. It's not a fairy story. It's not just something to comfort the, the wings around the, the campfire at night. We all have this right. Not only do we have it, we have the supporting legal documentation, which is still in force to prove that and whatever anybody says to you about the claim of right being a load of sectarian nonsense, remember that the, the king, King Charles, only swore to uphold the sectarian nonsense part of it, and that's why you never heard the rest of it, which guarantees in perpetuity that the Scots retain the right of self-determination under their own constitution, which is written unlike the fabled 
non-existent uh, kind of fluffy, cloudy constitution that the United Kingdom likes to change whenever it feels like it. So I guess my message to you today is I'm afraid we're going to have to wait a few more days, but come Saturday, the political situation in Scotland is going to be turned upside down. And it's about time it was. Our politicians have been sat on their thumbs for the last few years, unable to move, unable to use any kind of power to affect any meaningful change here. Well, we need to give them that power. And the only way we can do that is by listening and watching the television on Saturday and the media online. It will be streamed live by Independence Live, incidentally, so you will be able to watch it on your phones and devices at home if you don't trust the mainstream media, which, let's face it, nobody really does. And I think something like, um, I can't remember, it's not like 18 or more percentage of Scots have actually stopped paying their television licenses in disgust. And let's hope that that number climbs further and further. Why pay to be propagandised by the country next door on your TV sets? OK, that's it for me today, but make a date in your diary. Next Saturday, 22nd of July, the same day that the dreaded Treaty of Union was signed, will be the same day that we take back the freedom that we still have to vote to end the Union if we want to do so. That's it from me. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye for now.